What's good, y'all? Welcome back to the CFL Podcast, where today, man, I'm updating y'all some recruiting information. Finally, we get some recruiting information. Um, we're not going to know about the, uh, the commits, uh, most likely until December, as I said earlier. But let's talk about this, right? Let's talk about Evan Henry, the offensive tackle transfer from ULM, who, who you know, uh, Jackson State played earlier this season, and they lost a very close one to a game that they should have won, but that's that's over with. Uh, so let's talk about it, right? So Evan Henry, man, is an offensive tackle. As I said, he's 6'3", 310 pounds, uh, was a former three-star guy from DeSoto, Texas, out of high school, and Jackson State has offered him on the 4th, which is like four days ago. Today's the 8th. He, yeah, he got offered four days ago. Um so, just to give y'all a little rundown on Evan, right? I'm excited about this dude. Hopefully, he commits. Hopefully, he commits. Uh, but before I give y'all the rundown, uh, please, Instagram. Go on Instagram. If you are looking for a virtual assistant company to help you with anything that you do online, I have the perfect company for you. They go by the name of Brim Solutions. If you look them up on Instagram, I'm going to put the picture up so you don't have to search too hard. All right? You go there. Uh, you DM the founder. Her name is Rakira Fuller. She's a Howard graduate. Please, please support Howard, uh, not only Howard graduates, but HBCU graduates. Uh, I'm going to put the list of services up on there. Inquire about her services. They are very affordable. She'll sit down. She'll have a consultation with you online, and y'all can go from there. Just trust me. Trust me, all right? It's, it's great. She helps me a lot. Um, So, let's get to Evan Henry. So, in 2019... When he committed to ULM out of high school, he redshirted. He didn't play in the 2019 season. That happens with a lot of freshmen. Not really a surprise there, right? Uh, so in 2020 is when he finally saw action. He received a COVID-19 uh, season of competition waiver, which allowed him to, you know, compete. And he shed 20 pounds because he is 310 pounds. It's really big. So he shed 20 pounds. Uh, towards the end of the 2020 season. I just wanted to put that out there. That's important. Um, he was all Sun Belt honorable mention, okay, in his first year of action. He played in 10 games for ULM. Seven starts in that 2020 season out of the 10 games that he's played. He played at right tackle, I mean right guard. He played at right guard. He's an offensive tackle, but he played right guard. Started seven games for ULM. Um... So he led the team in total plays in 565, and he also led the team in pancakes with 16. Think about that for a minute. He plays tackle. He was moved in at guard. He led the team in plays, got a lot of experience, in pancakes with 16. This is the type of guy that Jackson State could be looking for, bro. All right. He played 50 snaps in, in just eight games uh, at some point during that season. He graded out as a winner of 80% or higher in the matchups that he faced in those 10 games. So in those 10 games, 80% of the time, he was graded to win his matchups. That's that's phenomenal. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's something Jackson State could use. I promise you. Uh, he also only allowed one and a half sacks in 350 pass plays. He only allowed one and a half sacks on 350 pass plays. What more could you ask for? This kid can do both. This kid can do both. He can pass protect and he can uh fire out. He can block off the ball. He's nasty. He's nasty. Um multiple knockdowns in five games. Multiple knockdowns. This is, which is why I said he can pass block and he can run block as well. Um his best performance came against Texas State, where he had he 88% of the time he won. In that game, 88% of the time, he won his matchups. And he also had four pancakes to go along with it. He did it all that game. He did it all. He still has three years of eligibility left. So, you know, wherever he goes, they're going to have him for a good amount of time. Uh, let's hope Let's hope it's Jackson State. All right? And something I found interesting, right? When he announced on Twitter... On October 29th, 2021, that he was leaving ULM. Well, first of all, let me say this. It was the day before the Appalachian State game that they lost 59 to 28, if I'm not mistaken. So clearly he made the right decision. 
Uh, even though ULM is a better team this year, the four and four still five hundred. Uh, but he started writing on the wall. He announced it October 29th, twenty twenty one. But what I found interesting, somebody in the comments on Twitter posted a GIF of Coach Prime saying, "You know what time it is?" As he's checking his watch. And Evan retweeted that. Coincidence? I think not. I think not. But maybe I'm just being a little paranoid. I, maybe I'm just being a little uh, superstitious, a little delusional, so I'm going to get off it. I'm just saying. That's, that's, a little, that's a little sketchy. All right? Now, he has at least one, two, three, four, five. Five, six offers. He has Grambling, Alabama A&M, uh, East Central. I don't even know what school East Central is, but he has that as well. Uh, North Texas, which is an FBS school. I'm pretty sure they're still F FBS. Uh, Prairie View, we know how great they are right now. And Texas Southern. So, Jackson State has competition right here within the SWAC, as well as the FBS. So, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I'd say they got just about a, 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 a shot as any other school in the SWAC, being uh, that their their success is coming pretty good right now. They're eight and one. Prairie View is doing good as well, so I guess you know maybe he'll be looking at that game as a deciding factor. We don't know, but I don't know, man. Overall, Evan Henry. First of all, you've seen his tape by now. I, I know I put it up by now. If not, you should be watching it right now. I I put the tape. He has a two minute tape on Twitter. So if you want to go to his Twitter, uh, you can do so and look at the full two minute clip. The reason why I had to split it up is because some of that tape goes really fast, and there's no marker indicating where he is on the field. Uh, he's number seventy four. So I just took the clips where you would best see him at, so that way you'll be able to identify him better. Um, so it, it was only like six clips, probably 22 seconds. But he has a whole two-minute clip on uh, Twitter, on his Twitter page, if you want to uh, see the full thing of him, to see the full scope of him. Now, for all y'all fans out there, SWAT fans, whether you're Texas Southern, Prairie View, JSU, Grambling, Alabama a and inquire about this kid. DM him. It's a race right now. All right, his recruiting is still open. Jackson State is his latest offer. If y'all want to hit this man up and tell him, hey, come to my school. Come to Prairie View. You see what we're doing with Jawan Pass. Uh, come to JSU. Block for my man Shador. Come to Grambling. Block for, uh, block for Noah Bowden. It's, it's, it's here. Texas Southern. Y'all got Andrew Body. You feel me? So, however y'all want to play this, I feel like you should. This dude is a really good talent, man. He's a really good talent, especially seeing his tape. I don't know why he doesn't have more offers right now. But being that he's won 80% of his matchups, I'd say this is somebody that you want on your team. This is a guy who, wherever he goes, most likely will be starting when he gets there. I mean, he's that good. Um, and we know, just speaking to JSU fans, right, we know – the problems that Jackson State has had with the offensive line this season. I mean, the running game just isn't there. This is a guy who you can send J.D. Martin or Santee Marshall. I'm not going to say Pickett because Pickett will be gone by next year. But, you know, these guys, you can you can send them behind Evan Henry. You can run these backs behind Evan Henry, and he's going to get the yardage for you. He's going to get this ball, get the, the defenders off the ball for you. All right, he's going to get you yardage. So, I don't know. I guess it just, I'm just waiting to see where he goes. I'm waiting to see where he goes. Hopefully, it's Jackson State. Because, you know, I'm rocking with Jackson State. Y'all know that. But I'll be happy to see this kid end up anywhere. I love to see talent come to HBCUs. I would love to see more talent go to the MEAC. Because, you know, they just getting the short end of the stick right now. But, if it's... As long as it's HBCU, it's all the same. We're all happy. Um, so, yeah, let me know what you think about this kid down below in the comment section, man. I think dude is a mauler. Um, clearly, he can do it both. His stat speaks for itself. He has 
uh, the experience and he has the stats to back himself up. So, with that being said, man, you are watching the CFL podcast. I should have one video on another offer that Jackson State has as well. Uh, but with that being said, you are watching the CFL podcast. I go by the name of Kobe, and I'm out. Peace.